lots of people. Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. I hope you are enjoying the museum today. My name is Anna Rita and I'll be your host for today's session. And uh, can I, just before we start, can I ask how many of you have been to a, a Nature Live event before here in this place? Okay, thank you very much <laughs> for coming back. Well, people ask this because um, we get some regulars. People keep coming back because every day Nature Live is different. Every day we invite a different scientist to come here and to talk with us about what they do behind the scenes, behind those closed doors we have on the galleries. You, you might not know this, but 99% of what we have is actually behind closed doors. So in the galleries, it's just a tiny bit of our collections. So for those of you who are expecting to meet our forensic anthropologist today, I'm so sorry to say that she felt she was not feeling very well this morning. So, but we are we were very lucky because there was a stick insect meeting <laughs> going on in the museum, and we just asked one of the the experts to come here and just to chat with us. So let's meet Ed. Hello, Ed. Hey. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much <laughs> for joining us today and to to bring along some of your uh, wonderful collections. Uh, okay. If you have any questions for Ed during these 25 minutes, just pop your hand and uh, Ed will try his best to, <laughs> to answer all the questions you have for him. Okay, Ed, okay. first question. Let's get to know you a little bit better. Okay. You work here in the museum. Yeah. Um, can just, you have a, a vi oh, did it fall over? Okay. Yeah. Can you get it? Because otherwise we, we won't be yeah. able to hear you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so while you, you try to do <laughs> that <laughs> difficult task, can you just very briefly tell us what you do here at the museum? Um, so I, I work in our entomology department, which is mm -hmm. just upstairs, which is um, insects. So I, I do some research on stick insects, cockroaches, mantids, and also a bit about how we make our sciences and our science and our collections available online. So it's kind of a mixed world, but mm -hmm. yeah, the first love is definitely <laughs> these guys. So <laughs> so because yeah. you fell in love with them yeah. <laughs> at a very young age. Yeah, yeah. So today it's all about stick insects and leaf insects. So the first question is, can you tell us what they are and give us some examples of a stick insect and a leaf insect is? A, a st uh, they're a pretty old group of insects, so they've been around probably about 300 million years, maybe. Um, it's very hard to tell, they don't really fossilise very well, and the fossil record of that whole group, and, and related things like grasshoppers, is a bit patchy. So we're still trying to work out quite how old they are, but they're pretty primitive insects, been around a long time, and they have evolved to look like sticks or leaves most of the time. So we have one that's particularly here. sticky, <laughs> <laughs> looking like one. And another, and another one. one looks like a leaf. So <laughs> the leaf ones are just a very, they've evolved to become very, very flat and spread out. But internally, the structures and everything is pretty much identical. You could map everything into it. It's just much more spread out. Ah, okay. And uh, so we call them stick and, and leaf insects. Yeah. That's the common names, but they have a scientific name. Don't so uh, there's various names, but oh um, okay. we use phasmida, which is a Greek derivative that means ghost or spectre, mm. which is kind of the. If you, I guess, it's when they first named it, it's kind of as a ghost leaf or something that's moving around in the <laughs> canopy. It's kind of it's a, bit, a bit of fun, more. Than <laughs> Greek. Okay, so I. We have plenty of visitors today, so I guess you must have plenty of questions. Give you I'm going, going to give you the opportunity to ask, what do you want to know about this, the things? Does anyone have any questions right at the moment? Not yet. Okay. okay. <laughs> do you have a question? Yeah. Yes? What is the most common stick insect Okay. Uh, so um, most of them are in, in a band around the tropics. So okay, I think we have, have a map. A map. Yeah. yeah. So you see that darker colours have a greater diversity of species. And so there's a band across the tropics which is particularly diverse. Um, you get a few up into parts of northern Europe, so France, there's a few species. There's in the Scilly Islands in the UK, there's a three or four species which were introduced in Victorian times from New Zealand. So the Victorians were great collectors of ferns and <coughs> ornamental plants from around the world. And so the eggs had travelled in the roots and the soil around the roots of these plants from New Zealand to the City Isles by ship and they've survived there for about 100 years. So the, the egg stage is pretty hardy. You can withstand <laughs> a sea voyage of many months, but <laughs> that's it. Okay, good question. Any more questions at this point? Yes. Um, probably not. In actual fact, um, so the colour in stick insects is there's various pigments which are in the fat, the fat soluble pigments, which is, is quite different to chlorophyll. 
and they can migrate up and down. So actually, if, when it's very dry, the, the kind of browner pigments migrate to the surface. Mm -hmm. So if the leaves are becoming dry, they can actually change color with humidity and kind of match the vegetation. But um, you can change the color. So if you feed things dandy, not dandy, daffodil leaves, so some species will start to turn a slight yellow, which is uh, picking up a chemical, a fat soluble chemical, but the, it's from the leaves which are green, those fat soluble pigments in daffodils, which will make it into the surface of some species. Okay, yeah. oh, they, they definitely, they have evolved um, very, very good strategies uh, to, to blend yeah. with, the, with the environment. Okay, so I think we, everyone is waiting to see some secrets. <laughs> so show us the, the, the first one. So you Which have one? A, a collection at home. Yes, I, have a few <laughs> I keep quite a few species at home. Um, How many different species? Uh, not as oh bad it as it has been. So <laughs> yeah. um, I normally have about 10 species at home, but it, um, if we're doing quite a lot of research, can go up to 30 or 40. So okay. And okay. So some of my friends keep over 100 uh, mm. colleagues. But it, it's very hard to study these things in the wild. Um, mm. They live a few years, and to make kind of any kind of study of how the different life stages behave, you kind of have to bring them, first of all, into a lab and go and go, yeah, mm -hmm. watch them do that. And they tend to be most active at either at night or when it's crepuscular, kind of dawn, dusk. And so if you don't want to come into work very mm -hmm. early, which I'm not a huge fan of, <laughs> <laughs> then doing it at home is a <laughs> much easier way. Okay. <laughs> so let's so show us some, some of the things you've brought along today. Okay, so we... This is kind of what we tempted you in with, I think. Um, okay, the this is are they going to... Um, the, the, these can be slightly violent, which I didn't tell the, <laughs> the girl who had them outside. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> <maybe>. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, if you actually, this is this is a female. It's sort of a species called Heteropteryx dilatata. Okay, hold it and still so the camera will pick it. Can we? I think they're trying. Turn it over. Yeah, but continue talking. And so the. Okay, so this is um this is half grown, so it will be probably about twice this size when it's an adult. And if we just carefully turn it over to, it has got some quite large. Spikes on the back leg. If I'm kind of get into yeah. see, it, it's doing it there. It's kind of crushing my finger, which is a kind of defense mechanism. So if you do annoy them, they will be a little bit violent. And what they can do is, if, it's, if it was a bit warmer, and so when it's slightly cool, insects kind of become really docile, which is why it's okay and it's not particularly dangerous at the moment. But if you kind of did it in the middle of summer, I'd be slightly more cautious than this. <laughs> but they can they can actually snap the back legs when they're warm, and that can actually dig in and cause, you know, cause you to draw blood on your finger. But that's when they're much bigger and it's much warmer. So this is reasonably safe. Okay, so no one can hold <laughs> this one at the end. Just in case, just in case. They are pretty docile, generally, and they, you have to feel really threatened, and this one's not quite big enough. But um, they do kind of make this, they rub their wings together. You can just about see the wings here. Oh. Um, they Let's see if the camera can pick it again. I'll try. I'll try and stop it. So you can just about see the wings coming through here. Mm -hmm. So these, these are actually wing buds. So only adults have external wings, and they kind of grow by molting. But the wings grow under the surface of the skin for the last few molts. So you can just about see them starting to form here. And when it becomes an adult, it will have wings not big enough for flight, but they can make a really big hissing noise. So they'll be kind of be hissing and the back legs flailing with lots of spikes. <laughs> and it's, kind of, it's quite intimidating. Okay, I think we no, have a video of you of one flying in the wild. If we if we can play it, it's it's it was during a field trip um, for a BBC program, and they they found one. Can you hear that? Oh, oh yeah, can you hear that? No. Well, later on, you yeah. can all come down <laughs> and try that to hear. So let's let's see the video of one in the wild. I got one thing for you. It's been caught by boatsman Nick Awayo. Oh my. And expedition photographer Ula Loman. <laughs> There's no rest in this place. Oh my god, that is absolutely incredible. A thing that folks. It crashed. <laughs> we were expecting that because we tried several times in the morning and it, it kept yeah. crashing. But you, you could just uh, see the. the, 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 the yeah, <laughs> the <so> wings. 
do you have any picture of um, of, of the wings? Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, th 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 this kind of like I said, it's just about the biggest flying insects we have alive at the moment in the world. Um, there were bigger dragonflies much earlier on, which I think that in terms of body length, that's just about the largest flying insect we have. So to see one in flight is quite unusual. Mm -hmm. um, we can keep those kind of things in captivity, but unless you want to heat an entire room to sort of like best by the 30 degrees, you don't get to see that flight pattern very often. So it's really nice to, to <laughs> see George out doing some work. <laughs> yeah. In video. Any questions for Ed? Anything you'd like to know about? Yes, do you have a question? Do you want to, to ask your question to the microphone so that yeah. everyone can hear? Um, when did they lay the eggs? When did they lay the eggs? When? When, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when they're adult. <laughs> it's kind of um, it kind of depends. Actually, in, in, in tropics, that can be any time of year. And in tropics, there's not really a huge difference between seasons. Um, in some places, you do get a wet and wetter season. So it tend to be at the sort of like beginning of the wetter season when there's more life. But um, in Europe, where there's much more seasonal difference, th these things tend to hibernate as, as the egg stage. So the egg stage is the hardiest, and then they go through like various nimble stages to become we adult. We have a, a picture of one egg. Here. So yeah, the egg that's basically kind of this big sponge-like, but quite solid surface, and inside that there's a kind of a soft membrane which the insect grows inside. So this outer coating is pretty unique to stick insects. So most groups of insects have just a very soft egg. If you've seen butterfly eggs, they're kind of quite delicate. This really thick coating. It is pretty unique to. Speak and you brought along some, oh, we have a some few, for yeah. us to see. Um. So if you go to the visualizer, let's yeah. Can you see that? So yeah. those, are, those, are, those are stick insects of something we can show you in a little. Do you yes, see the definitely. adult? <laughs> yes, we want to see the adults as well. This takes a little bit of fiddling. To see. Oh, that's the big one. Can I pass yeah. around some of the, the eggs yeah, you so have? Yeah, Okay, so you choose. can see how hard they are. One, two. We, we do need those back at the end. <laughs> Where does that, that species that you are about to show us originate from? These are uh, Southeast Asia. So, mm -hmm. um, ones this size, mainly Borneo and Malaysia, is okay. kind of the best place. But, but yeah, so this is <laughs> this is what hatches from those eggs <laughs> we're passing <laughs> around. So <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> we have a picture of <laughs> another species actually. Uh, just for us. <laughs> Uh, this is a um, this is a fairly big species of stick insect. Um, there are bigger ones we've seen, but uh, this are those arms or kind of these are or an antenna. These are arms, so they will. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's waving its arms around, trying to find something to climb up onto. Mm -hmm. So um, stick insects generally will always try and climb upwards, because if you're on the forest floor, most things you're finding are trees, and you climb up the trees where you feed on the leaves. So they tend to have this fact general upwards movement, um, which is a pain if they ever escape somewhere and you've got high ceilings. So we try and be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Ed? <laughs> about do you have another question? <laughs> okay, let me just <laughs> give a, uh, that gentleman a chance to ask a question and then I'll go to you. Oh no, you don't have, yeah, I can go to you then. <laughs> maybe it's maybe like how big is it? Is it? How, big can, how big can sick insects get? Yes. Okay, how big can they get? That's a pretty big okay, one. Okay, so this is, this is an adult of this species of Tyrocordia, which is pretty big. But um, a few colleagues of mine found in, in Borneo a few years ago something which is much longer. Um, so that's probably about twice as long as this. So that, that's the longest insect in the world. Um, see, that's a 30 centimetre ruler, and it's definitely longer than that. So this much longer than this one, wow. I guess, which is... And where, where was it from again? This is from southern Borneo. Um, there's maybe three times it's been found, so we don't really know too much about it. We know it has a very unusual egg, which has some very strange projections. Mm -hmm. Don't know what they're for. So um, <laughs> these big insects tend to live high up in the canopy, which is quite hard to study. Um, to get up there, you kind of have to throw ropes up, pull yourself up, spend quite a lot of time up there and... And then if you're you know, lucky, you've got something <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really okay. hard. 
Okay, any questions for it? Yes. What do they eat? So all stick insects feed on leaves. Um, I think we have a picture we have a of few one. Things. So, so this is, um, I think this is when I was in Costa Rica and just found this. This is a tiny insect, it's about this big, um, feeding on a, a leaf. And this kind of sort of like half moon cutout or crescent moon cutout is typical of stick insects. So they'll, they kind of extend the head up and then start chewing. It kind of cuts out this shape, which is generally a stick insect if you see that. So if you see some so leaf like this, you, you know that you need to look. Yeah, around. it gives you. Um, and so most of the time, is you can't really kind of lay out traps for them. You can't induce them in. So you have to spend a lot of time at night with a head torch walking around forest looking for signs of feeding. And that's much easier than trying to find the insects. And once you find the signs of feeding, you start to look under the leaves and go and see what's going on. So that's a good sign. It's a good, a good tree to look at. So and I know you dig some something from our botany collections. What's that that you have there? So I'm going to put this go back. Just let him rest a, a, a little bit. Um, this is is, a, is quite a rare example of a stick insect. Can you? Can you okay, let me um, let's try and find some bits. So the thing is, we, we don't know what most stick insects eat in the wild. We kind of bring to this country, most things feed on bramble which is easy for us, or eucalyptus, or something you can find in the garden. But we don't really know what they eat in the wild, which is quite a big problem, because in certain parts of the world, um, so in the United States, there are a huge pest of cherry orchards. Mm -hmm. And there, there's reports, before we had widespread use of insecticide, you could walk through cherry orchards at night, and it sounded like it was raining, and it was just sticking set eggs falling to the ground, which is obviously reduces your crop harvest by quite a lot. And um, also it attacked timber forests in Australia and various agricultural plants. Um, peppers in India, in China, they, they again attack timber forests. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what they eat, and we don't know which ones are likely to become pests if the environment changes. So we're starting a project to try and get people to record what they find stuff on. So lots of people go out, you know, they go into things, they go collecting insects, and just encourage people to collect what they're feeding on as well. So this is um, an old guy in kind of scientific associate who comes in and talks to us on every Friday and brings us mm. all kinds of interesting things from his travels. Yeah. This is something he collected in 1977, I think, from Papua New Guinea. And you can see the, the feeding marks here, the kind of typical half-present thing. And then there's a little bit of data here, which is what the plant is and what stick insect feeds on it. Okay. So, it's quite and so we're trying to start, start building a collection of plants and things, and or the plants the insects mm -hmm. feed on. And it's actually quite hard to say, so right, you know, we, we can do stick insects, we can identify them, that's fine. Um, plants, we know a lot less about, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's useful to be so here, and so you can So you just have to press them and then glue them, and then, you know, we get a few people upstairs to go this, and then sometimes you have to send it to Kew Gardens, and they have a, in this case, Southeast Asian stuff. Kew is the centre of Southeast Asian work, so we just <laughs> get on the district line, go down and <laughs> loads of things, they identify it, come back. So it's, it's building a really nice collaborative work workshop, or mm -hmm. workflow that we can start to solve some of these problems. And you know, they can say, oh, this plant's starting to spread here, and we can say, oh, this feeds on that. And we can start to try and spot problems mm -hmm. as they arise. And understand everything about the, the yeah. own environment. Yes, any more questions for, yeah. Yes, at the back, yeah. Uh, how old are stick insects? Uh, yeah. oh. It's probably about 18 months, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, 18 months, is that old or, or young for, um, for a stick insect? Stick insects, can they live in your house? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it depends where they're from. <laughs> so um, the European species would just be a year. So they'd be locked into the season. So the, mm -hmm. the adults will die at the first frost, the eggs will survive and they hatch. Mm -hmm. And they don't tend to live much longer than that, even if you keep them warm. In the tropics, there's no kind of big seasonal change. So, you know, they'll probably live three or four years in some cases. This kind of thing, three or four years. Um, smaller species, possibly a lot longer, by an up to seven, which is quite a long time for them. It's, it's hard to say, but it mm -hmm. when you keep them in idealized conditions, five to seven years, for some species, okay, but most of the time it's one, two, three, I guess. It's okay. Keep an eye when Ed I is coming to Nature Live and then you can ask <laughs> him <laughs> how old he is. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I, I missed you. Oh. Yeah. Um, Here we have an, uh, a picture of 
to show you something so is eating a stick insect in this. Spi so spiders will eat stick insects. Let's have the, 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 the pictures on all the yeah. screens so that so yeah, this, this is you can see that. This is a spider eating a stick insect, which isn't particularly nice. Um, there is, is it in the primates gallery upstairs, there's a picture of a loris, which is like a small monkey-like thing eating a big stick insect. Um, and then people do eat stick insects as well. There's a um, people eat stick yeah, insects. Yeah, there's a, a thing a bit similar. It must be crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a species a bit similar like this. There's a very, very one very large spine on his back legs. And in places in like New Guinea and uh, Gunnau Island is the famous one. They they use the that hind leg as a fishing hook, but they also eat the rest of the insect. So you just kind of have to skewer it, roast it till the legs fall off, and eat it. But there's also um, some of the really big stick insects, the the f kind of fatter rather than longer ones, okay. lay quite large eggs. Uh, large eggs. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we don't I don't any really. Any but they um, yeah, but some people kind of collect the eggs, boil them for a few seconds, then crack them open and eat that, which I've never tried. <laughs> but uh, but people say it's tasty. One of my colleagues did try it and said it wasn't very nice at all. You know, <laughs> it's just a bit of a gooey, tasteless. Thing, but protein rich, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Yes, a question from you. Yeah, go on. Can you repeat that? Yeah. We can wait. There's oh, what's your favorite stick insect? Ooh, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. <laughs> 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 I quite like this one. No this one? one? Yeah. This Why do you like this one? Because I found that one. Uh. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. um, so there's a few cases where most of the time these guys are trying to mimic or evolve to mimic plants, mm -hmm. bark. Um, there's one case where there's moss later on. But then a few kind of have gone the other way, which is instead of trying to hide themselves, they've evolved defenses. So this guy, black and red is a warning color. And that's they have a very like, kind of defensive spray. So if you kind of sneak up on it, it will kind of throw this milky secretion at you, which is irritating. And if it gets in your nose or eyes, it's rather painful. So. So not but all sting insects look like leaves or sticks. No, no, some are. Some are look. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is obviously evolved from something which has looked like a stick at stick, mm -hmm. but it's also then gone on and evolved to develop chemical defenses. And then as soon as you have chemical defenses, you want to advertise that fact. So you know, yeah, you it's quite easy to spot. It's like, no, don't want to eat that. No. Last time I ate one of those, it wasn't mm -hmm. a nice experience. So you red, have to red is bad. Come warning. Yeah. And you were saying that some evolved to look like. Um, is this one? The one like below, what? the one below. This one? Yeah. What is this one? So this is, um, this is a species from Costa Rica. It's very small, so that's actually someone's thumb mm. is on there. So it's adult, but at that size. But um, this feeds on the very like, long, thin, strandy mosses. So you can imagine how hard that is to find amongst you know, tropical moss, which might be like this high, and they've got an insect crawling through it that's, that's this big. It's kind of that's mm. incredible. Camouflage and it's very hard to find these. So <laughs> I mean, one of my one of my colleagues went to Colombia to try and find these and spent weeks looking for <laughs> yeah, before he finally got one. But yes. <laughs> Why not? Okay. <laughs> any final questions for Ed? Anything you'd like to know? Yes. <coughs> yeah. It's they have what the it comes from glands which are kind of generally used to kind of lubricate the skin or to provide sort of like oily secretion. So the whole body is covered in this kind of waxy secretion. And just modifications of that, and there's all kinds of stages in between. Um, you don't find them in modern stick insects, but the same mechanisms evolved in bugs and throughout insects. So you want to get ones which have a poisonous kind of coating. And then that kind of comes to a kind of a being able to excrete a on-demand milky substance, and then it kind of comes on to a full-fledged spray, which is a narrowing of that gland and increased muscle pressure behind it. So it's it's hard to say the exact route in stick insects, but we have so much <coughs> similar evidence in other groups that you can make a fairly good guess. Okay, it's a it, it's a, a a life's journey to to find out the yeah, evolution of, yeah. of this this insect. Any more questions? Any more questions? Big insects, small insects. Okay, what's the smallest stick insect then? The smallest one is there's a probably a s kind of very 
strange insect, which I don't think we've got one of. I will put a p just a, big, a general that's picture a of one. <laughs> oh, is this one? That's <laughs> a young one, but uh, there's a s small group um, from probably uh, Mexico up to California, a very narrow range, which have evolved to feed on the pine forests, and they're about the size of pine needles, so they're about this big, which as an adult, which is... Because you know, these are meant to be one of the largest groups of insects mm -hmm. in terms of body size, that's pretty tiny, but... There's much smaller insects around. Mm -hmm. than that, I think. Okay, so we are coming towards the end of the event. If you can just show us the other insects you have, and meanwhile I will okay, just I look some, sure. show some odd picture of, of stick insects while you prepare that. Okay. Let me get this guy out. Okay. Can you put pop it uh, under the visualizer, yeah, or is that sure. too hot? Yeah, no, that'd be fine. That's fine. And where is this, this, does this one come from? <coughs> um, again, this is Southeast Asia and kind of Philippines. Um, I brought this one along because this, this, this is a fully grown male. <coughs> um, this here. <coughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's an adult female of the same species. You can see the size difference <coughs> is pretty huge in those two. And uh, this one's had a bit of a bad molt, so lost one of its front legs, but it's <laughs> still careful. functioning, yeah. yeah. To, to run away. Okay, so do you have any final questions for Ed? Do you have one? Go on. <coughs> How old is that one? How old are these ones? Oh. Oh. I'm put you back. Um, these ones, two and a half years, I guess, probably. So these are... These are pretty old for stick and sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Ed will be staying around a few more minutes. You're going to come down and take a picture um, and perhaps old uh, yeah. hold one. Yeah, uh, you out. need to wash your hands after afterwards. Uh, but for now, can you just join me in a big, big thanks to Ed Becker. <laughs> and we are here every day, so I look forward to see you again. Thank you very much.